Good morning. We are going to do some children's chapel today. Today, it's all about a Bible story in the Old Testament that has a lot of feelings in it. Do you have lots of feelings? You guys have lots of feelings? Yes. Okay, so first we need to go over some of these feelings. Does anyone know what jealousy is? You think what's jealousy? If someone has something, you like really want it. You really want it. Well, there's some people in the story today that are going to be really jealous. Has anyone ever been jealous? Tyler, when have you been jealous? Can you have time? I know I have, but I don't remember. May, do you remember what time you were jealous? Mm -hmm. You think? Uh, maybe like, what was it, like one time... Tyler, I'm just bringing up an example. Okay. Like Tyler got a toy and I didn't and now we want a toy. Mm-hmm. That happens. Okay, the, some of the people in our story today get sad. Has anyone been sad? Yep. Yeah. A lot. What's the time you were sad, Lily? When somebody takes my toy when I went in my room and then I left it somewhere and then somebody picked it up. That makes me sad, too. Some of the people in the story today are mad. Y'all ever been mad before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, what's the time you've been mad? Do you remember? When I couldn't do something. When, when a parent or an aunt told you you couldn't do something? No, when I couldn't do something. Oh, you're mad at yourself? Yeah. You try something and you're mad at yourself? That happens. I've been mad that I can't go to school anymore. I'm mad that you can't go to school anymore. That makes me mad, too. There's also one more feeling here, and it's hope. Does anyone know what hope is? You're like not giving up, you just keep on trying. That's Yeah, it's like perseverance kind of. It's hoping in something you can't see. It's believing in something you can't see. And there's our main character, Joseph. And Joseph has a lot of hope. Now, our story is in the Old Testament. It says the beginning or the end of the Bible? The beginning. The beginning, good job, Lily. And we've been talking about my friend Abraham and he had a son, Isaac, and then he married Sarah. But today's story is about Joseph. Now, kids, what I'm gonna need you to do is anytime we talk about the um, uh, feeling, I need you to make that face. So if I say the people were mad, make mad faces. If I say the people were sad, make sad faces. If I say the people were hopeful, what do you think a hopeful face is? Smiling face? What about jealousy? Oh, there's a dog in the picture. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Okay, we're going to see. I don't, know what jealousy looks like. I don't know what jealousy looks like either. Because Abraham trusted God, he became God's friend. Because Abraham's son Isaac trusted God, he became God's friend too. Then Isaac had a son named Jacob, who, you guessed it, learned from his father to trust God. And then Jacob had a son, and then Jacob had another son, and another, and another. And Jacob had 12 sons in all, and their names were, are you ready for these crazy names? Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Ishkar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. The only normal one is Asher. Benjamin. And ben. Ben. Benny. Benny. All of Jacob's sons, Joseph was his favorite. Can you make a face if you were the favorite son? Oh, I'm the favorite. Jacob wanted Joseph to know that he was his dad's favorite, so he gave Joseph a special coat made of all the colors of the rainbow. This annoyed his brothers. Why didn't they get a special coat? Be annoyed. Annoyed. Your brother got a coat, and you did it. To make matters worse, Joseph told his older brothers about dreams he was having. In his dreams, Joseph saw himself ruling over his brothers, and he saw his brothers bowing down to him. Hearing about Joseph's dreams made his other brothers really annoyed and really jealous. Annoyed and jealous. Show me your annoyed and jealous face. Ooh, they were so mad at him. So much that they decided they'd be happier if Joseph wasn't around anymore. Oh no. So one day when their dad wasn't with them, they picked Joseph up and threw him into the hole in the ground. They were just going to leave him there forever until they had another idea. Have you ever gotten so mad at your brother or sister that you wanted to sell them to the circus? Have you? Yes. Not yet. Maybe the brothers have. I've been, I've been mad, but not that mad. Not that mad not yet? Not that mad. I've been mad at like other people. Mm, not that mad. 
All right, they want to sell him to the circus. Well, Joseph's brothers actually did, except not to the circus. They sold Joseph to some folks traveling to Egypt who sold Joseph again when they got to Egypt. Now Joseph had been thrown into a hole and sold twice. What a lousy week. In Egypt, Joseph worked for a very wealthy man. Joseph was honest and hardworking and the wealthy man liked him. But the man's wife told a lie about him and Joseph was sent to prison. Now Joseph had been thrown into a hole, sold twice, and sent to prison. Why would God let all this happen to Jacob's favorite son? Wasn't Jacob a friend of God? Joseph could have gotten mad and decided he didn't want to be God's friend anymore, but he did it. He still prayed to God and he still tried hard to do the right thing. So can you make a hopeful face? He was still hopeful. Hmm, I'm not sure what a hopeful face is. Hmm. And God had a plan for Joseph. While in prison, Joseph told two of the men that the meaning of their crazy dreams. God showed Joseph what the dreams meant. A few years later, Pharaoh, the king of all Egypt, also had a crazy dream. He'd heard about a guy named Joseph he'd met that could interpret dreams. Pharaoh called Joseph out of prison and told him his dream. Once again, God gave Joseph the meaning. The dream, Joseph said, was a warning. For seven years, Egypt would grow lots and lots of food, more than they could ever eat. But then, seven years after that, they would experience a famine where no food would grow at all. If the Egyptians didn't store up all the extra food for the first seven years, they, would have enough, they wouldn't have enough food during the famine, and many people would die. Can you be surprised? Oh no, people would die. Ah! Pharaoh was so happy that he made Joseph the second most powerful person in Egypt and put him in charge of all the food. Joseph made sure that he would have got enough to eat when things got tough. Uh-oh. When food stopped growing in Egypt, it also stopped growing where Joseph's family lived. They were really hungry, so hungry that they traveled all the way to Egypt to see if they could find food there. And sure enough, not only did they find plenty of food in Egypt, but they also found their brother Joseph. They thought Joseph would have been mad at them, but he wasn't. Why wasn't Joseph mad? Why do you think Joseph wasn't mad? Because, because he like, is a nice brother, maybe? Because just because he's a nice brother? Why else do you think Joseph wasn't mad at his brothers? You want to figure out why? Let's figure out why. He wasn't mad because he could see God's plan. If Joseph hadn't been thrown in a hole, sold twice, and then put in prison, Egypt would have run out of food, and many, many people would have died. Joseph's family would have run out of food too, and they would have died. God used something very bad, the way his brothers treated him, to do something very good to save Joseph's whole family. Joseph learned that God can use anything, no matter how bad, to do anything good. That's pretty cool, huh? There was lots of bad, bad things. He was thrown into prison. He was thrown into a hole. His brothers didn't like him. There's lots of ways that he was treated badly. But God used all those bad things. God used all the bad things to make something good. Lily. God used all the bad things for his good. He used it for his purpose. And I love that. Can God use your bad things for something good? Yes. Can God use your bad things for something good? Can God use your bad things for something good? Can God use your bad things for something good? Always. God can always turn it around. And it's our job to be hopeful and to trust him, even when things are kind of cruddy, right? All right, what can we make out of Legos this week? Uh, maybe the, um, I want to make a robe. Ooh, the robe. You can make a robe. I'll make like a hole, like, like I'll make like a square hole. That the brothers threw them in? Put a and they put a person down there? What do you think, Meg? What's one of the parts of the story? Mm -hmm. Maybe the rope too. Oh, you can make a rope. You could make part of the dream where there were cows and then there were um, skinny, skinny cows. You could make um, the pharaoh, the Potiphar. You could make a jail. You can make anything you want. Anything that shows that God can use bad things that happen to us just for him. Are you ready to pray? Put your hands so we don't get wiggly. Put your eyes so we don't see other stuff. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for showing us that even when things are bad and we don't like them, that you can always use it for your good. And help us to always be hopeful. Amen. See you next week.